So, it finally happened. King Cobra JFS, our favorite gothic bad boy, has gotten himself a pet, and to put it simply, I'm pretty concerned. I have been following Cobes for a few years now, and I've noticed some pretty damning behavior on his part, getting worse as time passes on. Throughout his story, Cobes actually hasn't interacted with many animals on screen all that much. We've seen some basic stuff, like how he interacts with pets belonging to his homeboys and home girls, but we've been presented with a new horrifying potential saga, if it doesn't end swiftly anyway. In this video, we'll be going over some of Cobes' interactions with animals, based on his own testimonies of his behavior, alongside what I've been able to gather from his videos and streams. And of course, shout out to all of the archive channels like Boglum Chronicles, Bite Size Cobra Vids, Bic Clips, and Lin and Lime. They're most definitely what's up, not a sponsor. At one point in his life, Josh's family had a dog named Obi. Josh loved Obi, and Obi tolerated Josh. Lily, the other dog they had at the time, was also tolerant of Josh. Regardless, Cobes loved these dogs a lot, so much so that he opted to share his spoils with them. What spoils, though? A plain hamburger from McDonald's? No. Maybe a slice of bologna? Nah, come on, just take a wild guess. He fed them weed nuggets. Yes, entire nuggets of marijuana were ingested by Obi and Lily because Cobes figured they'd enjoy getting high with him. And Obi dog, he loved weed. My dad would get all pissed off. He'd be like, quit getting my dog stoned. And I'm like, eh. I would smoke it before giving it to my family's dogs. I know my shit, so it's like, yeah. Obi love weed, dude. You don't even know the half of it. According to the Pet Poison Hotline, marijuana can garner moderate to severe reactions in dogs. It can even be fatal if they ingest a large quantity. He had a particular method of feeding them that he was quite fond of. He would mix ground up weed with Jif peanut butter and spread it on the inside of some tinfoil. Dogs being dogs, they were drawn to the peanut butter and began licking away and howling. Clint, Cobes' pathetic excuse of a father, was not happy about this. He told Josh to stop getting the dog stoned, but Cobes didn't pay him any mind. He was too busy abusing the hairy family members. Cobes also claimed that Obi would just eat nugs of weed without needing peanut butter. How sweet. His heart may have possibly somehow been in the right place, but marijuana is toxic to many animals. Just because there are things within the weed that could be positive doesn't exactly mean blowing smoke in their face would be a good idea, let alone feeding them entire nugs. I took a bunch of tin foil and I took some Jif creamy peanut butter and a bunch of weed and I grinded the weed up and mix it with the peanut butter and then like one Christmas Obi and Lily were like sitting there eating it <laughs> licking it up and like I got Obi shit faced the first time I gave him weed like legitimately I was smiling because I could see Obi's eyes getting redder than Satan's dick and he became extremely talkative after it after it he was like whoo, 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 whoo. you know what I'm saying dude Obi loved weed another dog that has unfortunately had a few run-ins with Cobra is Dobby a dog that belongs to homeboy Walt and homegirl Angie they're an older couple that Cobes hangs out with because they use him for DoorDash, and he's blissfully unaware of just how strange it is that someone his age is hanging out with some geezers. According to Cobra, Dobby was a rescue from a meth house, where drug addicts were taking hits of crystal and blowing the smoke into her face. When Walt and Angie got her, she was coming off the crystal meth and the vet allegedly recommended caffeine. Walt and Angie supposedly started serving cans of Mountain Dew to Dobby to help her get off the glass, I guess. A quick Google search confirms that this is simply not the right thing to do, as dogs should not drink soda due to the sugar and caffeine content. To put it simply, Dobby is a dog and should only be drinking water. Cobes ignores the simple act of serving her water and adamantly argues that Mountain Dew saved Dobby's life, which is, you know, horseshit. He also stated that Dobby enjoys the occasional hit of weed, believing marijuana to be great for dogs and that weed isn't a drug because it is a plant. This again is not the case. He also shared a video of himself feeding a nacho cheese Dorito taco from Taco Bell to her. While yes, dogs can eat some people food and be fine, most of the food that we eat is far too fatty for dogs. This means the poor pooch is not going to digest it optimally, which can lead to tummy aches, diarrhea, and just getting sick. But then again, that is par for the course for Taco Bell. The next creature that has had the misfortune of encountering Josh is a praying mantis. The green insect friend wandered her way into the cobra lair on September 6, 2021. A bug in the bog's den. Shocker, right? 
He kept the mantis as a pet for a few days, showing it off on Facebook and YouTube. He claims to have let it out of his apartment numerous times, but it supposedly just kept coming back. This convinced him that the insect wanted to be around him, and it was looking for a mild temperature to relax in. But a bug isn't going to care about either of those things. He loved the little green bastard, or at least he saw an opportunity for attention. He named her Mrs. Green and decided that he wanted to share some of his exquisite vape with her. He took a few nice long puffs of his vape pen and blew the vapor directly at Mrs. Green. After that, he dabbed his finger in his drink combo, which was some kind of ungodly green mishmash of different alcoholic beverages. He left a few droplets of the booze right on her face. There you go. Have a drop. He just wanted to get the bug fucked up, because sober company when you're all juiced up is kinda lame. By September 12th, the mantis had slowed down significantly. He saw this and immediately knew that she was dying because it was clearly obvious, attempting to band-aid the situation by saying all mantises slowed down and died just like she was doing. The Bonglum proceeded to start bouncing her around in his hand while she was just barely hanging on, just to show the camera that she wasn't doing too good. Check out my praying mantis here. Unfortunately, praying mantises will go through a phase where they stop eating and they just die altogether. That's just how praying mantises do. And I think the one that uh, landed in my apartment is uh, Mrs. Green. Is oh, you're still moving? Here she is. Oh, she's barely moving. Mrs. Green is not long for this world. Oh, still moving. Still moving. I don't know how to save her. You know, I, I don't. Like, I really, man, I tried to let this praying mantis go back outside, but she, she, she literally crawled back into my apartment, y'all. If I could feed her or give her some water or something to make her have more energy, I would, but I don't know what to do here. So I'm just gonna let her do her thing. Let nature run its course. She's barely moving, YouTube. It's not a good sign. Man, that sucks. Praying mantises, they're an interesting creature. Dude, if she dies, I can't I can't control it or stop it. That's just the circle of life for these things. I don't think my magic would help the praying mantis at this point. Eventually she just died, and he played it off like she was already on her way out when she arrived. But why did she die exactly? Well, if you couldn't put it together, nicotine is something that insects should not be given. It is incredibly toxic to them, and alcohol can actually melt some of the exoskeleton and their eyes. So she was definitely in pain as her body gradually broke down. She didn't even last a single week in his place, but then again, most animals never survive a wild boglum encounter. He later encased her in a resin tomb, stuck on a shitty looking magic wand for profit. The latest animal to be subjected to Cobra's barrage of nonsense is Puff. Puff is a bearded dragon that was recently given to Cobra by his friend Ian. How Cobes managed to pay Ian is unclear, but it most likely was some kind of drug exchange or Ian dumped the lizard on Cobes because he's fleeing some kind of prosecution. Either way, leaving an animal with Cobes is basically signing its death certificate. Judging by the pictures and videos we can see with Puff, the enclosure that Cobes has provided appears to be too small, but it may be the perspective of how he's recording. A proper enclosure would be about 120 gallons, which would be about 4 foot by 2 foot by 2 foot. Standard aquariums are just too small to use. The bottoms of beardy enclosures should have loose substrates, like play sand and soil. Cobes, in his infinite wisdom and inability to efficiently use Google, has been using that lousy reptile carpet crap. It can work in a pinch, but it isn't something you should use long term. Bearded dragons can get their little nails stuck in the carpet and injure themselves, not to mention they can hold on to some nasty bacteria if not cleaned or replaced frequently, which could get the poor little guy sick. Young reptiles are best kept away from loose substrates until they get older, as they have a tendency to eat the floor material and block their digestive tract. But Puff is a full-sized beardy, so Cobes doesn't have an excuse for using the lousy carpet. Given the current state of the enclosure and just how dirty it is already, it is probably safe to assume that Puff will die surrounded by filth. Hell, Josh won't even clean the glass for him. Come to think of it, Cobes never really cleans himself either, so I wonder how long it'll take for that green carpet to turn black from all the mashed-in lizard shit. 
Additionally, enclosures should have plenty of things for the beardy to climb and rest on. They tend to stay somewhat elevated above ground. There should be little hideaway cubbies for them to properly thermoregulate, alongside a basking perch that allows them to get a little closer to the heating bulb to warm them up. The hide should be on the opposite end of the enclosure as they need gradient temperatures to survive. Cobe's enclosure is mostly barren if not for the one basking perch and cubby he's got, along with a single log and water bowl. There's really nothing of value in that tank. The basking light is necessary to regulate their body heat. The required bulb is based on many factors of the enclosure in the room the enclosure is in. A halogen light is an optimal choice to prevent overheating and maintain humidity. Some things to take into account when building an enclosure are, but certainly aren't limited to, what's the room's temperature? How big is the enclosure? What is the distance between the perch and the light? These are all factors that need to be ironed out for the pet, ideally before you even have one. Reptiles like beardies are better suited for hotter, humid climates. The overall temperature of the tank should vary. The colder side should be somewhere around the low 70s, while the warm side should be somewhere around the high 80s. The bigger the tank, the more varied the temperature. The basking spot should be somewhere around 100 degrees, more or less. Cobes has taken Puff out of the enclosure and lets him roam around on the floor, which isn't a good idea considering Puff could just find a place to hide and die, but you really couldn't blame him for wanting to escape, could you? The overall weather conditions in Casper are not ideal for the survival of a cold-blooded creature. Bearded dragons are omnivores, so they eat small insects such as crickets. They also eat non-citrus fruits and some fresh vegetables. Some types of leafy greens, like the stems and leaves of dandelions, are acceptable as well. The most important thing to remember when feeding them is that they're going to need a varied diet, so you have to make sure to get all of the nutrition they're going to need. They can have too much or too little of certain things. At the time of making this video, he just leaves pieces of lettuce and dead insects in a corner of the enclosure, letting them pile up every single day. This is unsanitary and a waste of time and money. Lettuce is more or less just textured water. There's not much nutritional value there for them. He recently started serving mango to Puff, on top of all of the other nasty crap he's been leaving in Puff's tank. It would have been a sweet gesture if he, I don't know, cleaned up the food that Puff hasn't eaten yet. When I started doing my research, which was just me using Google for a few hours, I discovered that all you really need is just some basic cleaning notes. You need to remove uneaten food when the beardy is full. For fruits and vegetables, you need to remove them after about 30 minutes, otherwise you run the risk of overfeeding them, but the fruit can begin to rot and get moldy. Judging by the current state of the enclosure, I'm not confident mold is going to stay out of there for very long. Unfortunately, Cobes is too highly regarded to understand any of this, as he has been feeding puff mealworms. While yes, they can eat them, and they're a wonderful treat, they aren't the best for them. An ideal diet would be something centered more around crickets. Mealworms also contain more phosphorus than calcium, and too much phosphorus can prevent a beardy from properly synthesizing and using calcium. A diet with an overwhelming amount of mealworms can pose significant health risks. Speaking of calcium, they also need calcium supplements. Some leafy greens can help with this, but full-on supplements are the most common way of providing it. You can sprinkle some calcium powder onto their food or into their water. Cobra supposedly sprinkled the powder onto Puff's food, but he only seemed to manage to get it literally everywhere else. Nicely done, Josh. Realistically, I think it's only a matter of time before he's going to try to feed Puff some people food. And I use the term people food lightly because Cobes still can't cook for shit. He'll just try to force feed it some Mountain Dew hard-boiled eggs, if he doesn't add Puff to the green broth as a flavor enhancer. Beardies can live up to a few months without eating, which makes it easier for them to survive in harsh conditions where food may be scarce. However, they should not do this often. Cobes has mentioned multiple times that beardies can live with very little food. He even did this in the exact video where he announced that he received his beardie. To me, this is a major red flag. You should only wait two or three days maximum between feeding. A standard feeding schedule would be about 10 crickets a day or 20 crickets every two days. The cool thing about bearded dragons too is they're super easy to take care of. They don't eat a whole lot, so they can go months without eating because they're desert dwelling creatures, but that's not gonna be necessary for me. This means that even if only I, if only I have money for alcohol or Puff's food or light bulbs, Puff is coming first. I love drinking, don't get it twisted, but Puff will give me an excuse to cut down on my drinking. You know, not that I need one, because I'm actually pretty good about maintaining that. Well, that sucks. I didn't mean to drop it, but it smacked my fucking knee. And spilled all of my drink all over the carpet. Well, that's fucking smooth. 
Hey, you know what? It happens to the best of us, man. I got a bearded dragon in my other room. Like, oh, well, you spilled your alcoholic beverage. It just slipped out of my hand, and I watched it hit my knee, then hit the floor and just spill all over the place. So there was no chance of saving it. I'm like, well, that's kind of a bitch, but it is what it is. I'm hoping you guys are starting to see why I'm a little bit concerned. While beardies are good starting points for people interested in taking care of reptiles, that doesn't mean they're immediately easy to care for. They still need quite a bit of maintenance and will need to be looked after relatively diligently. More so if you're a mouth-breathing boglum. They're a financial investment and Cobes doesn't have disposable income. He stated that he's planning on buying more light bulbs and insects for Puff once he has more money coming in, but we all know he's just going to spend it on booze and tobacco. Another reason why I'm concerned is because Cobes is such a drunk and he's intellectually impaired. I'm worried about the possibility of him stomping it into the ground like he did with his hat in a drunken rage. Or maybe he'll sit on it when he returns after leaving Puff to feast on the chair bugs while Cobes was releasing his whiskey shits. Or, most likely, he'll find it dead in the enclosure and he'll eventually glue Puff to a stick and sell it as a ritualistic wand for an egregious price. Or maybe Puff will be made into a dank food hack. Only time will tell. Hell, another major concern is what if he tries to share a vape with it, or give it alcohol? He's given weed to dogs, blue nicotine vapor at a praying mantis, and is regularly under the influence himself. Puff's little guts won't be able to tackle that kind of abuse. Oh, and before I forget, he won't stop kissing Puff's face. Beardies can carry diseases like salmonella, so why the hell is he doing that? Oh, that's right, he doesn't do any proper research, so why would he know? The last thing I want to mention is more of a question, if anything, because I didn't find any answers to this and maybe someone will know. Cobes is currently convinced that Puff has been trying to attack their own reflection. If you watch the video, it looks more like Puff is trying to escape. Cope's solution to this was putting blue masking tape over the side of the enclosure where Puff's basking perch is so he can't see his reflection. This obviously doesn't work because it's glass and it's still going to reflect things. However, my concern is how the tape itself affects the thermal regulation. I'm curious if putting tape on the side of it is going to alter the gradient of the heat in the enclosure, which could potentially negatively affect Puff, but I don't know for sure. Maybe one of you guys can let me know in the comments, because I really have no idea. Either way, I believe Puff is not long for this world. Cobra's dad is aware that his son has a lizard and seemingly doesn't give a shit. He's chosen to support his son's neglectful behavior and just allow his idiotic son to kill another animal. Maybe when Puff turns up dead, the handful of morons who defend Cobra will realize he's not worth defending. Maybe they'll see that he is just incompetent and not deserving of pity, and is definitely not to be entrusted with the safety of another life, even if it is just an animal. Dead Beardy coming in nicely, Tubes. But that, fortunately, is going to be the end for today's video. If you like what I do, leave a comment, rate, and subscribe. If you want to support me in a more personal way, you can check out the Patreon link and the Teespring link in the description. I've got more content coming down the pipeline. But until then, I'll see you degenerates next time. Give her some CBD.